Welcome to this episode of Now That's Something Good, the podcast where we explore the extraordinary in the everyday ordinary. Now here's your host, Sarah Good. Hey friends, welcome back to the show. How are you doing? I don't know about where you're at, but the last week or so here where we're at in O'Fallon, Missouri, the sun has been shining and that has been amazing and that is definitely something good. We would love to hear about how the weather has been, (laughs) where you been at. That's like a huge topic of conversation. Hey, also, when you hear this podcast this week, man, we're coming up on a year of coronavirus, which is just crazy. We've just been reflecting on that, thinking through this last year, how there's been some really, really good moments, but also some hard moments in between, but just thankful that we're a year into this. And you know what? Coronavirus, one of the best things for us is it brought us the Now That's Something Good podcast, gave us a little space to do that. So even though there were some hard moments and probably none of us would necessarily choose to walk through a pandemic, um, there's still been some good. So I just want to encourage you, you know, Will and I are big on just taking some moments to pause and reflect and look back. So just want to ask you guys, man, just spend some moments as you're listening to this next episode, whether you're listening to it the week we're recording it or whether you're listening to it months from now, to just take some moments and go, hey God, what did you have for me in this last season? What do I need to remember? Um, What do I need to make sure I'm continuing to carry with me in this next season? And maybe there's also some things I need to try to stop and continue to work towards. But anyway, that's been something on my heart around here lately as we've just been discussing what a year into a pandemic where our life just all really changed has looked like. But I'm encouraged, though, even amidst just some of the hard parts of that, um, that God has been faithful and he has been good. And there's been a lot of great moments in between that. So we would love to share. You know, you can reach out to us. We're really easy to get a hold of. You can find us on Facebook and Instagram, and you can also email us anytime at podcast at saragood.com. We would love to hear maybe what God has just done out of the season in and through you in the hard things and the good things and everything in between. So today we are going to do part two of our episode with Brandon and Phoenix Johnson. If you remember, we've been spending a few weeks here talking all about relationships. It's been a lot of fun. We've been really focusing in kind of on married relationships and, and just what does that look like? And whether you're single, whether you're in a dating relationship, whether whether maybe you're widowed, I don't know, whatever your relationship status, I think there's something that we can just learn um, because relationship principles, whether that's a husband, wife, whether that's friends, there's just things that we can always do to be better relationally. And I know Will and I have learned so much as we've just heard these different stories and people sharing of their experiences and not just all the good, happy stuff, right? But the hard moments too, where they've had to learn and grow and maybe humble themselves a little bit to continue to move their relationships forward. So it's been a lot of fun to hear those stories. I'm excited for you to hear the second part of our conversation with Brandon and Phoenix. They are so fun. I know you got to hear that in the first episode. And if you haven't listened to the first episode yet, or first part, I should say, I'm sorry, first part, go back and check that out. Um, We'll link it in the show notes so you can easily find that, but listen to part one and then come back and catch us on part two. We're going to really hear the rest of kind of their first year being married, what that's looked like and hear how they've even managed some difficult things that they've had to walk through even before they got married. Um, And And they share some really fun date night ideas, which we'll tell you a little bit more at the end of the show. But here we go. Without any further ado, here's my conversation with Brandon and Phoenix part two. So nervous. I get, I say, all right, everybody, I've got an announcement (laughs) and I get on my knee and I propose and it was a beautiful moment and I forget what I said. I think I forgot. I wrote down all these notes and I just, but I did say, I love you. And I did <laughs> ask you if you'd spend the rest of your life with me. And then do you want me to tell the, the, the funny part? I do, I do want <laughs> you to tell the funny part. <laughs> Phoenix is like, shut up. Don't tell this part. <laughs> so I'm a little bit of a prankster. Phoenix and I both are. We love to, to joke around with each other and be goofy. Well, I get this bright idea that I am going to act like, I drop the ring over the side of the hot air balloon. So I I get down on the knee, I propose, and it's a rose gold diamond ring. And so after she says yes, I don't like do what the typical guy would do, which is take the ring out and put it on her finger. I just closed up the box, and it was really quick, and put it in my pocket and then gave her a big hug and big kiss. And then while I'm doing that, I pull out the fake ring from my other pocket, which is also rolls gold and a diamond while it's fake. It was like $4 on Amazon. And so I pull out the fake one while I'm high-fiving people, and I high-five somebody with the ring in my hand, 
and in, in the ring box, <laughs> and it drops over the side of the hot air balloon. In Phoenix, you, you should see her face. She she thought her ring was gone. And everybody did. Nobody knew about that side of the prank. And then Brandon. after about five seconds of making everybody squirm, I was like, oh, just kidding, just kidding. <laughs> but one way that you know Phoenix is amazing, and I just thought this was so awesome, she, um, she thought her engagement ring was gone. And all of a sudden, she's like, that's okay. I don't need a ring. I'm fine. I don't need a ring. She just was like... She's, Phoenix, that's really that's good. That's how I know that's, she loved me, too. She moved yeah. from Southern California to St. Louis, Missouri. I know. And she was still down, even if the ring was overboard. But then I pulled out the real one and gave it to her. And so it was, it was Phoenix, funny. you're quite the saint here. I feel like you're well, so good. Would my you other like thought to was, let's send just a search committee to go you know, find this ring. Yeah. So everybody yeah. come join. So I had another thought, too. Was it yeah. just angelic <laughs> so tell us from your i mean like were you total like did you see did you think at any point like this was gonna happen no i literally had <laughs> been because at that point once we talked about engagement it was hard for me because i had again been very committed to where i was at i was helping um lead an organization in california and felt like that's what i was supposed to be doing with yeah. for my life so i i wouldn't let myself think toward the future until mm-hmm. it got to that point. Mm-hmm. I wouldn't let my mind wander because that's for girls. It's easy to let your mind wander. Yeah. So I wouldn't let myself think about that until we had that conversation. So once we did, it like hit me so hard that this is going to mean me moving. This is going to mean me yeah. setting down some things that I love and like leaning on God. And so for me, it was like, okay, I, I needed a process. So I was encouraged to do like this 30 day prayer <laughs> journal and like really process it. And Along the way, I feel like God confirmed everything of mm. us being together. But, but it was like a couple of days before the the prayer journal was over that he proposed. And so I was literally so, so surprised that it happened so quick. And I think God just guarded my mind to where I didn't see all these clues because yeah. I literally had zero idea. And so <laughs> for me, I hindsight, I'm like, oh, this makes sense because yeah. my friend helped me get my nails done. She said it was going to be for another wedding uh, that we're going to both be in. And I was like, I guess it's spending time with you. Okay. And so I like did not read into that. Um, And then also like, I didn't read into all the people that were going to go on the hot air balloon with us were asking me like, so how did you guys meet? And like asking all these questions about our relationship. And I just thought they thought we were cute. And so, (laughs) (laughs) so I didn't read into that either. So literally I was so surprised. And then he threw like a surprise engagement party after, which was all themed and it was so amazing. And my family was there. It was perfect. And I I know it sounds like I'm really high maintenance because of this proposal, but I did tell one friend one time that this is what I dreamed of, but that it was a little too high maintenance that it, I didn't hold on to it. So the fact that he proposed that way was actually a surprise. So I don't feel like it's high maintenance. I feel like the proposal is the one time that like you really should no, no offense to any guy listening or girl, if you didn't get this big, huge story, it's special because it's your story. So like whatever it is, Yeah. but I think there is something cool too. So if you have yet to propose to somebody and you're listening, like, let's do it right, guys. Like, li- live up to Brandon's <laughs> standard here. No, I'm just kidding. No, do, do it, do it right. Do the do the thing. So, Phoenix, I want to talk. So after this, you guys are engaged. You're going to get married. We'll talk about that here in a second. But you're you talked about something. Your whole life, you were moving here to St. Louis from again California. Kind of <laughs> <laughs> sorry, <laughs> but tell a little bit like just about that whole transition moving here because you moved here a little bit before you guys actually got married to be able to kind of get settled a little bit, but just talk about how did you feel about that? Cause you literally moved across the country, had to leave a lot of friends, leave a job you loved, ministry you loved. Just talk about that. Yeah. I think it was quite the process that I had to feel fully. Um, again, I did that 30 day prayer journal, which helps so much. And I just asked God, what do you have? Like I will drop everything. And I had mm-hmm. to come to this place that I was going to go either way, um, for whatever God had, because yeah. I know his plan is the best. And so at this point, I feel like I was supposed to be so only just happy, mm-hmm. but because of this mixed feeling of being really sad, yeah. I like, was also very sad and I cried a lot. And, um, you know, like, I feel like I was letting some people down on my team and just talk to them a lot. But I think I let myself feel that. And I know that the reason why it hurt so bad is because I, I did have a lot of roots deep there. And, um, but I did also feel like 
once I processed this with God, that he actually was calling me to this and specifically to work with teens. Like I needed mm-hmm. to know that for myself. I didn't yep. need, I didn't want to just fit into his world, go to just his church, just his ministry. I needed to know that this is what God had for me too, mm-hmm. which has helped so much um, because it could in, in hard moments, you know, when you're feeling like you're miss home or whatever, yeah. to know for a fact that I've been called to this, um, yeah. then I had so much assurance to go into it fully free and not looking back. So um, that helped a lot and had a lot of great friends that have just been so key in the process and obviously had come and done trips here a lot. Yeah. And um, you guys helped that process as well. A very welcoming church that we go to and um, had already known some youth and things where yeah. it felt like yeah. more like home versus a brand new place. Good. When she would come visit uh, while we were dating, you know, she would come to youth and yeah. she's just natural at ministry. So she'd be wanting to pray for girls and stuff. Yeah. And I remember telling her, I'm like, don't pray for anybody. Don't try to get close to anybody. I was so like, I was yeah. trying to protect our youth yeah. just in case we didn't, well, you know, end up getting married. I wasn't that mean to you, but I was like, a little. don't sit on the front row while don't I'm, sl- while I'm preaching. <laughs> Literally, and, girls are like pouring their hearts out. I'm like... Don't pray for them. Don't pray for them. I, I just, gotta. <laughs> I was protecting our, our youth's hearts because, yeah. you know, we were just dating. Yeah. But when she came here and we were engaged, we went to summer camp together. Mm-hmm. That was probably one of the highlights for, for, for us, like kicking off our ministry together. And um, it's just been a joy, like serving alongside of Phoenix. And yeah. she really is called to ministry and God is using her in an amazing way at our church. She very much is. And all over. A lot of places. Love it. Okay. So tell us just real quick about the wedding and where it was at. Just a few for all of the wedding lovers on here, Phoenix, we just need a few wedding details. Tell us that information. Yeah. Well, everything from the beginning to the end was a blessing, honestly. Um, We had so much favor. We had so many friends helping and did a lot of the details. We couldn't have made it happen without them. And so, I mean, not that this is why you have community, but because of some great community, we had mm. so many blessings. Um, it was such a beautiful day. It was outdoors in the beautiful California yeah. um, weather. <laughs> it was actually <laughs> kind of hot that day, but um, it was beautiful. And we, again, are we are. I feel like we're somewhat fun people and we try to have really fun elements. So we, um, his family (laughs) are fun people. (laughs) They're very fun. His uh, family loves the Rocky series. So our grand entrance was with smoke bombs and the Rocky theme music and boxing gloves. And each of our bridesmaids and groomsmen like came in and were like boxing each other. I love that part. We had a like surprise dance. We did bye, bye, bye dance uh, with our (laughs) bridesmaids and groomsmen. Um, that was super fun. And, um, I feel like one thing that was really cool that I uh, will always cherish, and it was a very much something that God led me to, was, um, and I, for, for any of you young girls out there that are listening that would want to do this, I think this really helps um, your heart in the process and just give it to God while you're dating before you give your heart to a man, is mm-hmm. um, I had a journal that I um, would write to my future husband. A lot more times it was just me talking to God and processing dating and things in my heart and things that I learned from other marriages, including my parents' marriage. And I got to write my vows in that. And that that was like, I had waited to give that to him since I was a junior in high school Hmm. and um, got to write my vows and read those out of of that. So that was really, really special. Um, So many cool God moments in the midst of it. We actually did a... um, like a little family reunion. We called it Family Olympics the day before, which really just like actually connected our families, some family that had not been connected for many years and didn't talk to each other. Mm. And we just, we covered the wedding in prayer from the beginning. And that really helped the wedding planning process as well. Just be more peaceful and remember what it's all yeah. about. But yeah. just the, the day of that wedding, everybody, people that we would never think would talk to each other because they hadn't for so many years. We're dancing on the dance floor together. We're being friends and hanging out. And it was just so, so incredible. So that's cool. Brandon, you got anything to add from the day? What stood out to you? It was the greatest day of my life besides the Browns beating the Steelers in the playoffs this past year. That I thought was, it was going to uh, be when you accepted Jesus into your heart. No, it was a, an amazing <laughs> wedding. God's, God's blessing was all over it. I think, um, I always tease Phoenix that whenever something good happens in our life, like it's, it's good to be married to me because God, God blesses me and you get to be a part of it. But I think it's really the opposite. Like even our vacation we just took, I feel like being married to Phoenix 
there's just the favor of God is on her life. And I get to partake in that because, uh, I'm her husband, but that yeah. day was just God's hand was all over it. Like, like my family's got a lot of divorce and a lot of dysfunction mm-hmm. and just to see all sides of my family come together and be dancing together and yeah. bumping each other on the dance floor <laughs> was, was amazing. But yeah, it was just an amazing, an amazing wedding. That's so cool. I think God's grace, he blesses us even when we don't deserve it. And I think God also honors obedience sometimes when you do it his way. Absolutely. And so encouraging all you guys out there, do it God's way. And if you want God's blessing, you got to do it God's way, you know, Um, but he still does have grace and blesses us even when we don't deserve it. But there are rewards for diligently seeking the Lord and doing it his way. And not that we were perfect, but I felt like that was a reward from the Lord that day. Yeah. The amount of joy that was there. It was a beautiful day. I hope we'll get the, we'll share some pictures with y'all on social so you can see some of their wedding pictures. So, okay. So you've been married now. That was, what was your wedding day? August? August, 2019. Okay. August 2nd. 2nd. Okay. I was like, hold on a second. <laughs> I was just saying second. for August 2nd, 2019. So it's been um, a year and a half. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. So just let me ask this question about a year and a half of marriage. What has been the most surprising thing about being married that maybe you didn't think would be, or just something, something surprising. It can be, be anything. Phoenix, you go first. <laughs> <laughs> I think it goes with like my greatest lesson is how much communication actually is so important. People always say that, but I'm like, I used to think I was a lot better than I, than I am. Like so much of my junk <laughs> has come out in marriage. And I think that always, I was always scared to share that with anybody. I didn't want yeah. people to see my junk. I knew that God loved that and me and God were good, but I didn't think I could ever share that with somebody else. Yeah. Um, and when you marry the the right type of person, um, you don't have to be scared about that. Um, Brandon so humbly welcomes my emotions and my feelings and my insecurities, my sin, Mm -hmm. like he just loves me through it. And I think, um, when we did premarital counseling, he, he would say like healthy conflict will lead to intimacy. And so I think we're, a lot of people are scared to show their real stuff. Um, but when you are taking it to God, but also there's a healthy place to also take it to your spouse. And so that's been really surprising in how he's reacted to those things. I always thought that would push him away, but in reality, it's really helped us. And I think, um, again, just making sure I'm going to God in those moments as well, um, helps, helps a lot. And, um, yeah, how, how good communication was. I thought I needed to process everything with God first and make it look really good before I took it to, to Brandon. Hmm. But there's actually a very good, healthy, like obviously God's the only one that can handle all of our stuff. Yeah. But yeah. there's also a good, healthy um, amount to tell your, your spouse when you're going through stuff as well. So Absolutely. Brandon, what about for you? What was one of the most surprising things about it's, the being married? It's it was surprising, but also we kind of we all know it, right? The importance of being uh, humble hmm. and marrying somebody with humility, and I knew that, but I didn't know that. And now that we've been married a year and a half, it's I mean, conflict is inevitable, but yeah. when you're married to somebody that is willing to admit when they're wrong and is willing to apologize to you and apologize to the Lord. Hmm. And it was just like a whole new level of being equally yoked. I yeah. know we say that in church a lot, but being on the same level spiritually, hmm. um, not like we're super spiritual, just that we're under the Lord's authority before we're under each other's authority in a sense. Yeah. And so just the importance of being married to somebody that has a strong relationship with God because um, there's so much trust I have in Phoenix because I know what type of person she is. And she's just easy to get along with. We do have conflict, but um, to answer your question, it's surprising how much that quality of humility and and being able to admit when you're wrong and and to to humbly resolve conflict was important, but not as it was way more important than I ever imagined. Yeah. That's good. So I want to bring up something, Brandon, if this is okay. When you were back on our show, mm-hmm. he was Brandon was like episode number, I think you're like two or three. I'm going to go back. We'll post it in the show notes. If you did not listen to Brandon's solo episode, go listen to it. He shared just a lot of really great 
great insights, great wisdom. Um, but I want to talk about you guys got to experience something before you even got married that a lot of couples won't maybe experience sometimes till they're a little further in and just going through um, a hard kind of traumatic grief situation. Mm-hmm. Brandon, you lost your sister a few mm-hmm. years back mm-hmm. and you guys were dating in the process of that. And so I would just, we don't talk about it a long time, but just love Phoenix. I'm going to start with you. Just what did you learn about God in those moments, how to love somebody when they're going through something incredibly, incredibly hard, what would you just share? Because we're all going to have that happen in some way, shape, or form. How did you... I think, I mean, it's cheesy, but two words is Holy Spirit. Hmm. Um, a lot of times I didn't know what to do. I didn't understand. I didn't yeah. have... didn't know. Uh, thankfully, I got to know his sister a little bit, but I mm-hmm. didn't know her close to anywhere near what how they knew her or what they were feeling. Yeah. And so a lot of times I didn't feel equipped. I didn't know what to do, especially from a far distance. And so I would just pray yeah. and I just ask God, what am I supposed to do? And yeah. there's lots of times where he said, just keep supporting and, and loving mm-hmm. them. Mm-hmm. And so I would try to find little ways to do that. Like I sent his sister something in the hospital. Um, I'd message her prayers. I'd message his, him and his family prayers. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I mean that's continued into into marriage. There's I know that he's always um, thinking about her. There's yeah. not a time. I think so many people don't know when to say something, mm-hmm. and a lot of times you think you err on the side of not saying anything at all. Yeah. But reality is they're always thinking about it, mm-hmm. and um, it's just like something where I just ask the Holy Spirit in that moment, like, should I say something or should I not? Yeah. But I think more than anything, and you could you know correct me if I'm wrong. It means more to them that you do remember, that mm-hmm. you do think about that and don't just forget that that's something because it's a big deal to them. Yeah. And so, um, yeah, just continuing to be there for um, him and the family. And I just, mm-hmm. I didn't know that if we were going to make it as far as like dating, you know, yeah. it was a really, really hard time. But I think also, um, and I say this for any of our youth girls, like when you're dating someone to really know if they're the person, you need to also see them in a harder time. Mm-hmm. Um, I didn't know this was going to obviously happen. Yeah. Um, but I saw Brandon in a very, very hard time. And um, his in a past relationship, the reason it didn't work out was because in a hard time, that person went away from the Lord. Hmm. But right after she passed, the next thing that Brandon spoke about was God's goodness, even mm-hmm. when we don't understand. Mm-hmm. And that was all I needed to know that he had that character that was going to always go to God in hard times, because that's what defines somebody, what you, who you are in those yeah. times. And so I think that gave me a lot of confidence. And I kept just trying to ask questions, you know, and mm-hmm. try to remember those important holidays and things that he would remember um, and try to honor her in those, in those times as well. So a lot of times I didn't know how to do it best, but I just asked God and I feel like he would give me ideas or told me to hold my tongue in certain times. And so I would just go off of that. It's good, Phoenix. Brandon, what would you say just as a person who were unfortunately the person that had to go through Mm -hmm. the really hard thing, how was that? What, what things would you encourage a spouse or a friend or a partner? Just what was helpful about what Phoenix would do or is there anything that you had to learn along the way and be like, hey, maybe don't do that? Or, you know, no, not nothing really uh, specific pops out. I just know she was so supportive. And, yeah. Um, in her prayers and encouragement. Like, there would be sometimes I'd be like, I don't feel like talking about it, mm-hmm. or, you know, please don't do that, or I don't know. But she was awesome and supportive. And, mm-hmm. you know, it was, it was such a mix of emotions because, like, you're falling in love and you're about to get engaged and yeah and then you have all that sadness mm-hmm. as well and so it's it's really weird um how it could be like <clears throat> excuse me the best year of your life but the worst mm-hmm. year of your life at the yeah. same time um and so but yeah she was extremely supportive sorry i'm getting choked up but okay. phoenix also had a lot of um a mix of emotions too. Like she left her church, she left her best friends, she left her job. Mm-hmm. And then she was also getting married to me, which mm-hmm. obviously I'm the best thing that's ever happened. To <laughs> I'm, obviously. Sorry, obviously. I'm, I'm joking. I'm trying to make myself stop crying. But we both had like the greatest year of our life, but also the saddest year of our yeah. life at the same time. Yeah. So I don't know. It's weird how that happens. Mm-hmm. Um, maybe it was the Lord. Mm-hmm. I'm sure it was. He's in control. So he yeah. kind of knows the timing and, and how all that stuff works out. Mm-hmm. But mm-hmm. 
Well, thank you, Brandon. I know that's a hard, yeah. hard thing to talk about, but I think you touched on something so great that we've talked about. That's kind of been a theme um, on the podcast. For those of you, if you haven't listened to other episodes, go back and listen to it. You'll kind of hear this, is that um, God really has built us, I think, in His sovereignty that we can have two very polar opposites of emotions happening mm-hmm. at the same time, that uh-huh. we can hold deep grief and sadness, but at the same time hold deep joy and excitement and hope um, for the future. And I think, as you said, both of you in very different ways were having to live that out um, kind of simultaneously. And I'm sure your marriage right now is stronger for it. And your 10-year anniversary, your 20-year, 40, 50, hopefully get to like 60, 70 years is going to be stronger because of those things and how you guys carried each other and handled each other. So for those of you listening, I mean, we do sometimes really hard things happen in the midst of our walk and we're walking with people. And I think just like you said, Phoenix kind of giving space and asking um, what are what are they needing? And also knowing that sometimes the person going through the thing isn't going to always know. And sometimes right. just being there is mm-hmm. the best thing that you can do um, for that person. And like you said, following the Holy Spirit and praying and just saying, hey, what, what can I do? How can I come alongside you? And I think it's a great conversation. um, If you guys are listening to ask those questions ahead of time, like, Mm -hmm. Hey, if something hard, like just even talking about like, how do you deal with sadness? Cause everybody Mm -hmm. deals with that. How do you deal when you're upset? Like everybody processes that totally Mm -hmm. differently and having those conversations ahead of time um, might help you know, like, okay, when they get angry, they just want to be alone and they're not Mm -hmm. mad at me and they're not upset, but this Mm -hmm. is how they're processing and it's okay. And I'm going to be strong enough in who I am and who I am in Christ to give them the space and not freak out that they hate me Mm -hmm. um, or whatever, vice versa. But it's good stuff. Just interrupting this conversation to tell you about something good Fridays. My mom and dad often ask us to tell them something good from our week. It is our way of sharing and focusing in on the good things. We'd love for you to join us. This Friday, create a story or post on Instagram or Facebook sharing your something good. Make sure to tag Now That's Something Good so we can see, celebrate with you, and share as well. And you never know when we will pick one of you to send a little something good to. Let's start the weekend strong by filling everyone's feeds with all kinds of good things. Now, let's get back to the episode. I'm going to hard shift us gears though from something sad to something happy. So something I love about Brandon and Phoenix is I really think you guys are a lot of fun. You guys have some of the most interesting like (laughs) dates, experiences. So I want to talk about two things. One, you brought up your guys' love for practical jokes. Mm -hmm. So let me just start there. I want to hear what's the best practical joke that you guys have played on each other to date. You want to go first? Go ahead. (laughs) Well... I always knew that I wanted to get Brandon back um, from, you know, the hot air balloon situation. Um, I thought about faking a pregnancy, but I'm like, that's too mean. I got to do something a little less than I'll that. I'll kill you. And so I, he always scares other people when they come to visit his home with fake snakes. He puts fake snakes <laughs> in the tub. He puts them in their beds. And so I was like, I'm going to go back with his own joke. So I looked for a that's remote control Brandon. snake, but none of them looked realistic. But I found this really realistic tarantula. And so at one I've point. this tarantula. I, yes, yes. Your family has experienced it. They helped me actually order it. Thank you. Good kids. Um, so, yeah, he. We didn't know the right time to do it. My, my family was there at the, at that moment, and we were like playing with it outside, trying to make sure we knew how it worked. Well, yeah. he all of a sudden walked out, so I quickly put it under his car, which was perfect because I didn't realize he was going to his trunk. So he goes to his trunk. My our dog's also there, and I make the <laughs> the spider come out. He jumped so high and screamed, and our dog actually jumped really high in the air, and it was so good. We almost caught it on film, but my sister laughed so hard that she like missed it. But it was really good. I've never seen him jump so high how do you feel about that one brandon all i can say was it was probably a manly scream that's all i can say (laughs) hey you know what own it he's got to own it that's good okay brandon what's the best best prank you've pulled on phoenix the hot air balloon one well it's just it's classic classic. can you call that a prank i feel like that's like a surprise i don't know if that counts a good prank i would say did i have i pranked you more oh i'm sure i'm trying to think of a good one think of any good ones that i've done to you (laughs) I mean, more um, of our joking has to do with um, we put bets on everything. So okay, yeah, if, there's, okay. if we play a game of checkers, the loser has to do something like for him, he had to put a bunch of peanut butter on himself for losing <laughs> and run in the middle of a dog park. That was the worst. Okay, literally, wait, hold on. I literally <laughs> had to more. put peanut butter all over my arms and legs and my face, and I had to go into this dog park. <laughs> and, of course, we asked the owners if it was okay, but, like, 
tens of like ten dogs were like licking me at simultaneously to get all this <laughs> peanut butter off. Do you have a video clip of this? Yes, we yeah, do. We do. Okay. We'll I feel like later. we're gonna have to post this. I on. beat her the other night at a game, and she, her consequence, she had to go to Walmart and get a stranger to scratch her back. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, it's very awkward. Like- yeah, so I mean, more than practical jokes, we just do a lot of those. But it okay. honestly makes our relationship so much more fun. Yeah, the most average game of checkers could end in like so much laughter. So it's so fun. So that's, I love it. He's introduced that to my life, and it's made everything more fun. Okay, so. I feel like you could start a whole like list of just like your bets. Like here, here's some fun <laughs> date date adventures. Do this, and here's a twist. You could have a whole side company. Okay, so Phoenix. <laughs> you have a great love for all things themed. Amen. Which mm-hmm. I appreciate. Like, mm-hmm. I, I really do. Like, so I'm not like, I think this is great. I love a good part. We've talked about this. Mm-hmm. We both have a love for party planning, wedding planning, all things, you know, and it, all down to the very small details. So I love this about you. So tell me a couple of your themed dates or themed experiences that either you may Brandon do or just in general. Well, he knows that that is my love. So he's actually planned some really great dates. One of those dates, which will always stay in my memory, is um, someone told us we should try this restaurant called Hobo's. So he thought, okay, I'm going to pick her up. Okay, Phoenix, dress as a hobo. We're going to dress as hobos and go to this restaurant named Hobo's. Well, he thought Hobo's meant redneck. So he dressed in boots and like a flannel. (laughs) I knew Hobo to be as like homeless. So I just was like... a hipster homeless person and we show up I'm like what are you wearing (laughs) but we ended up eating there and he brought us these fake like snaggle tooth teeth and we had to wear them while we ordered our food and so it made the waitress like die laughing and then after we went to the store and we had it like kept um like like telling each other to go ask somebody a question with our teeth in and you can't like break a smile and so that was fun and themed uh which was really really fun and then um we did a he did a burger theme one time, and so we watched good a little clips of Good Burger on the way to um, burger different theme. burger places. Okay. So we steak were uh, burgers trying are to figure here. out the best steak burger. So okay. we went yes. to Steak and Shake, Culver's, Freddy's, somewhere else I forget. Yeah. But. So we usually when we have a theme date, we either dress like it. Talk, we talk about stories. So I think we probably talked about burger stories or best burgers we've ever had, and then we rated three different burgers and try to figure I out love the it. best. So I love it. that was fun because it's all we're like all in and it was all nicely planned and so fun. So I we love went it. on a golf date, went to the driving range and then we went to play putt putt. Dressed then we as golfers. Dressed as golfers. <laughs> Talked about golfing stories. <laughs> and then I remember at putt putt we made a bet and you I had to beat you by like t- ten strokes and you ended I only ended up beating you by like one barely. And I played golf in high school so that was really <laughs> embarrassing. But I think I, I had to do something crazy. You got to grow out your was. beard for oh, a week. Oh, I did. Yeah. She loves when I have a beard. I oh. dislike my beard. It's itchy and red. No <laughs> offense, red heads. Um, <laughs> but I had to grow out my beard, I think, for like 10 days or something. Yeah. Okay. It's terrible. Yes. Pray, so, pray, pray, for my, pray for our marriage. Pray for your marriage. <laughs> I love it. I feel like this keeps things like, you know, just fun. Do you do this? Like, do you guys try to, try to have like a date night once a week? What's the... Give us the not necessarily a themed date night. That's a lot of work, you know. <laughs> yeah, <as laughs> but we say, try to do. It's a lot of creativity do... for somebody that's not that creative. <laughs> Brandon, um, we try talking to do about a me. Date but, once a week, though. Yeah, I mean that's our goal. Okay, but it doesn't always happen, but okay. that's that's. Do you have something a set we... night? Let's talk about this. Why? Why would a date? Tell everybody listening, just in your guys' perspective, why would having a regular date night and what regular can be once a week, even once a month? Just why is that important? I feel like um, when you're married and it's just you two, it seems like, why should we go on a date? We're spending so much time together. But this is very focused time. And for a girl, too, specifically, that's a way that girls feel pursued. Specifically, call it a date. It's not like we're just going to get dinner together because that's what we would have done because we don't have groceries. It's like an intentional, (laughs) like, hey, we're spending time on our marriage and together. And um, again, for us, our goal is to laugh and have fun. And so sometimes weeks can be hard. And so to have that time and some laughter is so key. And we've been given the advice by married people that you should set this as a priority now because then you're you're actually more apt to do it when you're you have kids yeah versus yeah. trying to ha- start having dates when you have kids it's much harder versus having this in our you know weekly schedule now so so that's good okay so do you take turns planning the dates or how does this normally um I think Phoenix gives me ideas. Don't we have a note in our phone? Yeah, with we have date a note. Ideas? Okay, <laughs> so that's sometimes a good... she helps me out and gives me ideas. Okay. She's very creative. 
uh, one night we had, I came home and all oh, of a sudden no. I was entered into a Nerf war. <laughs> I didn't realize <laughs> so, we were going to talk about this. I won't tell the whole story. Oh. But <laughs> anyway. We try to keep this show G slash PG, so if you're going to go somewhere yeah, else, we I can't. Think, I came home and there was a sign on the door, or I came home and there was like James Bond music and there was like <laughs> an army coat that I needed to put on and a Nerf headlamp. gun and a headlamp and I had to like sign. go shoot her. <laughs> so. No, but the funny part of the story is. Preface the story. We have an Airbnb in our lower level of the house. Oh, yeah. yeah. And I planned this whole date knowing, having the knowledge that there wasn't going to be an Airbnb guest. He usually tells me, but this time he forgot to tell me. And so I had to set up. I set the table like in front of where the Airbnb guests would go. Yeah. And so there was literally, it was all dark. Like James Bond music <laughs> blasting, and I said, "You can go ahead and come in." Well, the second I texted that, two people came in, and I almost <gasps> shot them with my Nerf gun. Yeah, she so. was hiding behind the banister, like they're about like, to "Welcome, shoot this is your inauguration <laughs> yes. to staying at our house, a part exactly. of the deal." I That's- literally have a camo jacket on and a headlamp with like black stripes <laughs> on my face. I'm like. If they see me, they're going to not know what's happening. <laughs> and I don't think they spoke English, so this it was probably really confusing for them. That's hilarious. I hope that you guys are all listening are America. taking notes here. So <laughs> you got some great date night ideas just now. So you guys recently just got to go on vacation. You literally just came back from, what, yeah. like two days ago? Mm-hmm. Three days? Uh, even a day? Saturday what day did last you- night. Oh, was it just last night? <laughs> yeah. Oh, okay. Look, you literally just got back from yes. vacation, and you're spending your first night back... At the good house. I love it. Okay. So tell us a little bit, a couple highlights from your vacation. Well, we uh, we called it our baby moon because this year we're going to, God willing, try to have ch- a kid. Okay. Um, if God pl- if God Very wills excited it. for this. Yes. And so we wanted to get out that last, like, go hard, adventurous yeah. um, <laughs> vacation. So we went to the big island of Hawaii okay. for six days. Then we went over to Kauai for three days. And it was literally, we got up at 6.30 a.m., hiked. Uh, went to the beach. We went to Volcano National Park. We went scuba diving. We yeah did all this stuff. Amazing. So we'd get up early and stay out, stay up late, do the same thing the next day. Pack our yeah. lunch everywhere we went. Didn't even have time to stop and eat. But the two highlights. Well, I'll share my highlight. Then I know what your highlight is. My highlight was we went scuba diving at night, thirty feet under the ocean, um, and we swam with manta rays, which are. Not dangerous to people, which is good, but they were like 15 (laughs) feet wide. They weighed 1,500 pounds, and they're like swimming an inch away from your head. So if you're looking for things to put on your bucket list, (laughs) swim with the (gasps) dive with the manta rays on the big island of Hawaii. I'm not sure that that's going to be on my bucket list, but that (laughs) will take your word for it. You can just watch a video on YouTube or our video. I just watched your video. (laughs) I did watch your video. Actually, it's great. It felt like I was there. It's all I need. Phoenix, what was a highlight for you? Well, um... Brandon didn't love this this experience as much as me, but we got to go on a helicopter and look over the Kauai, um, all, over all Kauai, and got to see the Grand Canyon of Kauai, which is so beautiful. And it was the most amazing experience being up there, just seeing all of God's creation and how, I mean, it was so massive. It just is a good reminder of yeah. God's that much more majestic and big. Hmm. And um, it was just so, so cool. Such a cool experience. I know we were so lucky that we got to do that. And um yeah, that was my that was my highlight. So I feel like I'm going to make you guys because we had a little conversation before we hit record, and you guys were talking about the helicopter ride. Yeah. Would Brandon? Would you like to tell <laughs> marriage us a lessons? More? Yeah, well, I feel like this is a great lesson. I tried to get Phoenix to like body surf a wave. It was like a one foot wave, and she <laughs> it was, was terrified. bigger than that. She thought she was going to die and go to heaven from the one foot wave <laughs> because she was in control, right? And then I'm like, "What is wrong with you?" And then we get on the helicopter, <laughs> and it's kind of windy. And she's totally cool. And I'm like squeezing her hand, freaking out. Like, what am I doing up in the air when it's this windy and a stinking helicopter? (laughs) So we realized that Phoenix is afraid of things she can control. And I'm afraid of things I can't control. Okay. So I don't know how that's going to play out in our marriage, but that's (laughs) one thing we learned about each other this vacation. I feel like that's a great realization. (laughs) That's a good... So Phoenix, you're afraid of things you can control. Yes, I'm okay. terrified if I'm on a ladder and I could make myself fall, but I can go on the highest roller coaster and be totally okay. I don't know how I that this works. This is okay. But That's an interesting. I'm liking that. That's a good. <laughs> I, I probably fall more like Brandon. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not in this thing. I'm not in control, and it's gonna take me down. But yeah. I love it. Okay, we've covered a lot of ground. Is there anything that y'all want to share that we did not get to talk about yet? Any other tips, advice, just anything? Any stories you want to share? 
I would say I don't necessarily believe there's one person out there for yeah, that's for good. you. Yeah. But I do think there God wants you to to choose the right type of person. Mm-hmm. And so like Phoenix might disagree with me about that. Now I now I will say I do think God put us together. Yeah. Got like crossed our paths and I do think me sliding into her DMs was <laughs> God led. <laughs> um, God was guiding my fingertips um, on my cell phone, but so I do think God put us together, and I, I obviously am so glad that I waited yeah. for the right type of person in Phoenix, and and but I do think God wants us to use our brain and, and choose, and especially the dudes. Like it's our job to pursue a girl mm-hmm. and ask her out on a date, and. Um, but I would just say the right type of person is more important than finding the one. Like, That's good. look at the character traits. Look how they treat their family. Look how they treat their friends. How are they when things go bad? How are they when yeah. nobody's you know watching or get to know their character? Let dating be a fun process, but really let it be a process where you get to know the right type of person. Yeah. And as you date um, the right way and date wisely, God will show you if that person's right for you or not. That's good, Brandon. Yep. Phoenix, you've been a huge, you You were telling me, I forgot to bring this up earlier. You used to have, you got to remind me what it was. Was it an Instagram account? Something for married. You've been yeah, a long Instagram. fan before you were married of just wanting to help pour into couples and marriages. Talk about that for just a second. Yeah, I think for those that are single out there, like God has such a plan. For, for me, I knew God had um, marriage ministry on my heart and I yeah. kept... Singleness was hard, and that's probably my advice would, would be some stuff about singleness, but um, it was hard, and that gave me so much um, just remembering like that God had that promise yeah. and that I wasn't going to be a nun if He called me to marriage ministry someday, but I just, I think marriage ministry actually starts into your single, it starts in singleness. Yeah, that's um, good. If you are becoming the person God wants you to be, you're going to be healthier to then even date, then that leads to marriage, which leads to more. Yeah. Um, and so doing that well. And so for me, I just always wanted to learn from other married people earlier. I read marriage books even before I was even dating somebody. And I just um, wanted to get wisdom from other people that had gone before me and um, just promote and celebrate marriage. It's hard. I think (laughs) anniversaries should be celebrated more than birthdays because there's a lot more work that goes into those. Absolutely. And um, something that, you know, God willing, we maybe do down the line. I I felt very called after my parents' um, mm. relationship. Long story short, um, they divorced but got back together through a lot of prayer, and it just gave me so much hope. I know that the enemy loves to tear down uh, marriages, yeah. loves to tear down yeah. the church, even starting with families. Mm-hmm. Um, and so, definitely feel feel called to that someday. Um, took a little break from it because I feel like there's a lot for me to learn right now, yeah. and to just fully give in to. Uh, you know, our beginning of our marriage, but maybe someday I'll pick back up, God willing, if that's what he has. And yeah, uh, yeah I think that's important. great. Um, do you guys have one, Phoenix, you mentioned just the singleness. Do you have any one more word of advice just to give people who are right now in a season of just waiting and maybe struggling with that or maybe not struggling? Just what would you say? God, oh, you can go. You mean to go? Um, I would say who you marry is the second most important decision in your life. So it's worth waiting. Mm -hmm. Uh, The first decision is obviously if you're going to serve God or not, but it's worth waiting. I would say don't just hide out in the basement and wait for God to bring someone to you Mm -hmm. though. Like put yourself in the right uh, areas and and God will take care of the rest. I don't think online dating is bad. If Phoenix and I didn't work out, I was probably going to go that route. And I don't think it's terrible. I think it's God uses that. Absolutely. But put yourself out there, go get involved in a church, serve. If you're a dude, serve on the greeting team at church. You get to say (laughs) hi to every person that walks in the the church, not in a stalker type of way, but put yourself out there, get to know people. Um, and God has a way of crossing the paths with the right person at the right time, but don't just hide out in your basement. So there's that fine, fine line of not make, not kicking the door open, but at the same time, God can guide a moving ship better than he can guide a ship that's just sitting still. That's good. Yeah. I love it. Phoenix. There's so many things to say, but I would, um, leave you with 
enjoy your singleness and take it fully with God. Um, marriage is not a destination. Um, it's part of the plan, but singleness is very much part of the plan. Sometimes we yeah. want to go from mountaintop to mountaintop, but God is very much in the valley in the developing and building your character. I would not take away my single years for anything. Um, it took me a while to see them as good. Yeah. It was a lot of times where it was really hard, and I wondered, like, God, are you out there? I saw mm-hmm. my friends getting married. I saw... Um, working out for other people. And I just felt like maybe I wasn't seen or Mm. God was holding out on me. But when I, when I focused on the truth that he was a good father, that his timing is perfect, it helped my, my process so much. And when I fully took it for what it is, it was one of the most beautiful times of my life. And, um, it's, easy to again say on the other side of marriage, like, you know, like there was eventually hope, but there's hope for everybody. God gives you the desires of your heart. And, um, somebody, somebody told me this one time and it it stuck with me. We talked to to our youth about it this morning. Um, the, I always felt bad for wanting that and to like, think about that all the time. And I think there's a place where it becomes an idol. Like I I realized marriage was an idol for me and that was like what I thought I needed to get to. Um, so I had to give that up, but I also, Realize someone told me that um, in the Garden of Eden, um, Adam and Eve, even before sin was, you know, introduced, the first longing that was there was mm. for another person, yeah. and that was God given. And so it wasn't wrong, and it was going to be done in the right timing. And so, yeah. um, just to go all in with God, serve Him fully, don't hold back, become who you are supposed to be, and your yeah. calling with Him. And I feel like that's the healthiest place to even take you to the next step. You know, um, so enjoy singleness; it's amazing. Include. Be prayerful in it, um, especially prayerful within your dating process. Um, don't make God a separate piece of your yeah. life. That's very important. Bring in community um, and have really good friendships with the person of the opposite sex. And, you know, having really healthy, good brother sister relationships yes. and um, just having good community in general. I think that's great, guys. You shared a lot of really good just tips, all the things, all the encouragement. I love hearing part of your story. So the show is called Now That's Something Good. So the last question we have to ask both of you before you leave is tell us something good. You've already shared a lot of good things, but like what's just one more little good tidbit you want to share? It can be anything. I've got one. So if you're a dude, especially, girls can read this too, but the book... um, by Joshua Harris called I Kissed Dating Goodbye. Okay. Okay, don't read that. But the second book, the, say, second, hold on. <laughs> the second book that he wrote um, was kind of an amend, I don't even know the word, amendment yeah. to what that book was. Yeah. It's called, um, oh geez, Boy Meets Girl. Yes. And it <laughs> is a great manual for dating. Now I will just give this, <laughs> this might make you not want to read it, but he's no longer a pastor. I don't even know if he's a Christian anymore, (laughs) but what I'm telling you is in that book is a great, great guide to, to dating God's way. Yeah. And it doesn't matter what that guy's doing nowadays. It, I've read it numerous times. I've given it to dudes. Phoenix's brother is starting to date a Christian girl. And he's like, what do I do? And I said, dude, before you go on another date, read this book. (laughs) And it's filled with wisdom. Um, and so that's something good. It is Boy a good book. Meets Girl by Joshua Harris and enjoy and, and, and it'll save you a lot of trouble if you follow what he gives yeah. you the advice of. And that's so, awesome. Yep. Okay. Phoenix, what's something good you want to share? Um, I am thinking of it now. <laughs> um, <laughs> let's see something good. I would just say, um, I was going to try to think of a book too, but I can't think of anything right now. That's okay. Um, but I think, honestly, the something good is just lean into God. He has good things. So whatever you do in this plan, like Brandon said, it's going to turn out good. It's going to turn out fun. Enjoy the process of singleness. Enjoy the process of dating. It's all fun. Yeah. It's all part of God's plan. And um, he has something good for you. I love it. I've got one more good thing. Can I, can I do you one can, more? I guess you can Andy have more Stanley than Stanley has a great sermon series out there. Uh, I think it's called Guardrails. Okay. And in that, he talks a lot about dating. And he said something, while you're single, see if I can get it, become the person you're looking for is looking for. Something like that. <laughs> I think I just butchered. <laughs> become, become the person that you're looking for is looking for. Okay, that makes become, sense. Okay. While you're single, become the person you're looking for. Yeah. Become the person <laughs> that the person... Oh, my gosh. We'll link Just it in the show notes. We'll find the right Wait, quote. Wait, since we'll he got one there. more thing, can I say one more thing? Oh yes, my gosh. Okay. Go the ahead. last thing. If you're looking for a good series about singleness, 
marriage, dating, all that stuff. Yeah. Ben Stewart wrote a book about that, and he has a great podcast as well. And that was okay. really helpful in my process of knowing who to date, how to date, and I think he gives some really good practicals. Okay, awesome. Become the person that you're looking for. <laughs> I butchered it again. <laughs> I think Phoenix said something earlier. It's like, become the person that you want. Become the person that the person you're looking for is looking for. Oh, nice. There you nice. go. Okay, yay. You got it. Well, Brandon, on that note, we won't let you back for a third time. No, I'm just kidding. It's nice, it's nice knowing you. No, we'll be back. Thank you guys so much for coming on. Appreciate it. Thank Have you for having time. us. Thanks, guys. Man, didn't I say their conversation is so fun? Just hearing the rest of their story, hearing Brandon even share some of the hard parts I know is difficult, but we appreciate just being able to always keep it real here on the show. Like we said, we want to talk about the good moments and the hard moments and everything in between, because that is where God always shines through and where we really see that kind of extraordinary peace that can come out of the everyday ordinary. Brandon and Phoenix shared a lot of kind of different date night ideas, how they theme things out, and it was a lot of fun. We're actually going to let Phoenix take over our social media here soon and share some more ideas. But I want to encourage you, we would love to hear from you. What are some things that you do either in your married relationships or maybe just in your friendships to just be intentional, to have fun with your time together? Maybe share some great date night ideas, some great friend ideas. We would love to hear those and either share them on your stories, Instagram, Facebook, tag us so that we can share or send us an email at podcast at saragood.com and let us know what you're doing. And maybe we'll be able to compile a list or find some fun way that we can share that because let's be honest, we could probably all use a little more creativity and a little more intentionality in our relationships. And this might just be a fun way to spice all of it up. Our friendships, maybe even our our relationships with our people at work, just all of those things would be great. But thank you so much for listening to this episode. As always, your likes and your shares just are huge to us at Now That Something Good podcast. It means a lot to us when you've been encouraged by an episode and you take a moment to just directly share that with a friend or maybe share on your social pages. That just helps us continue to share good news with lots of people. We hope you have a great week and take a moment to reflect on what good things are going on in your life and how you can share a little something good with someone around you today. 